<laughs> It'll hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Welcome to DJ Mirror's podcast. This is Lovage. <laughs> We're interviewing Zoo today at uh, in San Diego. Okay, well, Zoo. We'll start with a really corny question. Why did you choose Falco? You sound so like tense. Right. No, okay. I'm being interviewed. Yeah. Why, well, so uh, why did you choose Falco? Okay, so I think the first matches that I watched were um, between like Ken and Bomb Soldier, mm -hmm. and from there like. I, this is like when I got introduced to Committed Smash, so I started with Marth and I just chain grab Falco all day. And then eventually like, like I picked Marth because Ken won, and I thought, okay, Ken's the best, <laughs> Ken's the best so Marth's the best yeah. character. I'll start with him and I'll learn the game and I'll work my way to a character, right? And then it wasn't long, like maybe like a week or something, and then I just, I just started watching, because I only watched matches in uh, Ken's perspective, and then I started watching them in Bond Soldiers. And even though he lost, I think it was a lot more impressive or cool, mm -hmm. like just, it fit me a lot more because I'm not very patient and smart and spacing. <laughs> like I kind of, if I just get one hit, then like I'm much better off just getting going for the combos and stuff yeah. like that. And Falco's combos are more universal than like Mars. Yeah. yeah, so that's like a difference between like your style and Mega's style. Oh. Mega, Mega will only go for like a two or three hit combo. Yeah, yeah, and for you'll sure. go for a full combo. Yeah. But it doesn't really work that way against Mango because he just doesn't let me get it. Yeah, he's ever. not gonna let you get hits. Yeah, yeah. never. So um, okay, well. So what's your interpretation of the tier list? Like just ju just the high tiers and like mid middle, I guess. Oh, uh, how would you, how would you rank all the characters? I think I think that how the tier list should be ordered is how like how well they do like individually just on their own. So like a lot of people would put Fox on top, and I guess that would be true because all around like he's he's good on every stage against like every character basically all around pretty good. But then like realistically like Fox has never really won a tournament. Right. Yeah. So. So actually now, now I think Puff is probably top tier because Puff does well against every character on every stage, almost in every situation. And wins tournaments. And wins tournaments, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, Dr. PP beat Hungrybox recently, yeah. but I mean, that seems more like of an anomaly or whatever. Like, it's, an, it doesn't, an outlier, yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. It doesn't, I, I don't know if it'll happen again, we'll see, but yeah. yeah. Puff, I think, is the best. That's very good. So, yeah. you, you, put, you put Fox, you still put Fox in top tier? Oh, Fox and top well, top tier, you, sure. You don't have to rank them individually, but put it in tiers. So oh, sure. Like, top tier would be like... Fox, Falco, Puff, or Puff, like... Yeah, Puff, Fox, Falco. Um, I think slightly under that are Sheik and Marth, and under yeah, that are like Peach, Falcon, those and characters. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think like Samus is, is better than Ganon? I think Hugs makes Samus good. Right? Okay, I think yeah. so. Okay. I wanted to ask this question before, but... um. When you were first learning the game, and you were impressed with Bomb Soldier and all that, in like 07 or 06, whatever? Yeah, 05. Um, 05? Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, how much did you practice every day? And mm. what did you do to like really get into the game? A lot. Um, I basically like just looked at like a video, and if Bomb Soldier just did, just did one thing, I would drill myself until I could get it. Mm -hmm. Like, try and turn around with, like uh, a truck. I would do that like 50 times before I could, you know, just like, I guess one thing at a time, like I would do that, and then like when I play matches, I just focus on that. I don't, I just yeah. forget about even hitting the other person. I just, okay, I'll throw them off and I'll try, <laughs> wave, like shine, turn around, and try. Yeah. And don't, just forget about everything else. And just eventually just add it up really nicely. And that's how it got technical. Could people, people knew you early on, like maybe in 06 or whatever, in NorCal as being really technical. Like before people knew you guys good, they knew you guys technical, right? Stupid technical. Yeah, like, yeah, like, technical. like I couldn't L cancel for like the first <laughs> however long. And everyone yeah. would just, like, if, if someone had to play me, they would be scared, but then someone would tell them, oh, just shield and shield grab him, because you can't out cancel. <laughs> yeah. And it would work every time, yeah. and I would always run into it. And, um, yeah. yeah. So do you think that you had such like, a good technical base? Do you think that helped you as you got better? Like, when you came to SoCon, you got better and better. Do you think having that, like, technical base helped you out a lot? I think, I think all the best players, at least from what I've seen now, like, all the really top players started out being really some stupid technical player. At least a lot of the ones that I've seen. Mango is like an exception, like there are exceptions of course. And, and Hugbox is an exception. Yeah, but Mewtwo but King definitely. Mewtwo King yeah. was known for being super technical, like you're doing really well right now and you're known for being really technical, yeah. but like a year ago, you're dumb. Right? Was, yeah, you're still dumb. <laughs> but you're, like it picks up really fast. Right. I think being technical helps a lot. It helps a lot, so. Yeah. So if, if someone was starting the game, even though it's a lot of work, you'd still say, you know, work your hardest to be as technical as possible. Yeah. You know? Be be technical. Play bad people. Play level one. <laughs> yeah, but really. play level one. Yeah. And then and then that's where you get your creativity. Yeah, and exactly. Then, otherwise, if you play someone like Mango like all the time, it'll be hard because you're just yeah. shut down and you'll never know how to actually be aggressive. And yeah. I think, well, the best players are all pretty much aggressive, and yeah. that's how they win. Yep. Like even though it is really good to play the like you know you will get better. You will learn a lot playing Mango. If he's the only person you play when you suck, you're not gonna. Win yeah, you have to get up to that point where it actually means something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So when did you move to SoCal? Um, well, starting college, so like summer of 08. Okay. And, yeah, and um, 
Before you moved here, did you like kind of research the players, or is there any way you prepared to to play against SoCal? Yeah, I actually did. I that, that was one of the first thing that I th first things that I thought of because Smash was really really important to me back then. And I wanted to do well in SoCal too. But um, there's one time like I, I like winter break of when I was still in high school, so I wasn't in SoCal. I just took a train or like a, a bus just down to SoCal, and I, I researched them even then. Oh yeah. So especially now that I came all the way down, like I looked up like Lucky videos, like Mango videos, and stuff like that. But yeah. I mean. I couldn't really find that much, but yeah, I, I did my research. You wanted to hit the ground running when you came here? <laughs> like you wanted to do really well? When you yeah, yeah, here. especially first tournament. And you did, you got second at a... I, I surprised myself, I didn't expect to be lucky at all. Like, but then you lost to Mega Falcon. <laughs> I was, that was the closest I've ever gotten yeah, to Yeah, it's the worst ever since. It was, it was, that was, yeah, like yeah. I've never, that, I think that was almost last hit, last stock. So yeah, it was pretty close. Yeah, yeah. both, all three, all three sets or something like that, all two yeah. sets. And, yeah, that was <laughs> the first time was the closest I've ever gotten. Yeah. So how do you, now, you know, you've been to SoCal for two years. You're really familiar with both scenes, NorCal and SoCal. How do you compare SoCal to other regions? So East Coast and South and all that. I think, I think SoCal, the, the problem with, I don't, I don't know if I can say anything really because, like, within regions, like, people beat each other and results yeah. won't make sense and, like power ranking even today don't, don't, yeah, yeah yeah even today lucky last like uh, lucky can be an onslaught but lose to like Mac deep. eddie in mexico <laughs> you know yeah. but i mean eddie eddie's great and all but you know this yeah like it just it doesn't make some sense sometimes i think i think just the fact that we have mango like mango like single-handedly makes our region better not yeah. just by his presence but like he plays everyone he gets everyone good like i would not be like half as good as i am without mango right and i mean I think our region, I think SoCal is pretty good. We're still active. We just got a 43 person like tournament. Yeah. And out of nowhere, kind of. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. San Diego. I think I think SoCal is one of the regions with, you know, like a lot of regions has like you know, oh, Dark Rain or has Drepin, like a single, like well known player. But SoCal has a bunch. We yeah. have um, we have like, like Lucky, Hugs, Hugs Mango. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we might overrate ourselves. That might be region bias, but I, at least I think like a lot of our players seem to do really well out of state. Yeah. Yeah.